<laughs> Here we go again. Go, boy. Here we go again. Uh, Emily and Nick with your favorite final mic. That's me. That's him. Say something else. Slurp. Yep. All right. <laughs> We're coming at you with a new episode of Gag Me with a Knife, a weekly podcast where we dissect, disembowel, and ladies. Squeakily D. And, uh, yeah, the best and worst uh, slasher movies. Yeah, we get and uh, we got another Patreon uh, fan request. Yeah, episode for uh, Heather. Hey, hey Heather, what's going on? Heather, thank you so much for your patronage and support. This one's for you. Yeah, oh, we're gonna we're gonna do this one for Heather. Did it's we mention uh, Psycho not, too? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, dude, I'm I'm getting there. I'm very slowly reading this paragraph. <laughs> Oh, we're gonna be discussing to... 1983. I'm sorry, I was trying to Make give you something special, but Mike, you. Mike just fucked it up. So, okay, oh, uh, to okay, hey, no, no, Research. we will be discussing 1983 Psycho <laughs> 2. Emily has the box, just like every other one of them. See, Mike? Do you see? Do you fucking see now? I'm so sorry. Like, God damn it! Yeah. We're, we're for this I thought since somebody was paying for it, it meant something, but it doesn't. Um, it fucking doesn't. Heather, anything it means I can do nothing. To I'm sorry, Heather. <laughs> Four and four. No. Get started. Phone number again. Uh, I need to read the box. box. Heather, don't fucking call him. In 1960, Alfred Hitchcock shocked audiences around the world and made screen history with his gothic horror masterpiece, Psycho. (laughs) Now, 22 (laughs) years later, the Bates Motel is back in business and screams of terror are once again being heard as the long-awaited sequel, Psycho 2, comes to the screen. Anthony Perkins, who starred as Norman Bates, and Vera Miles, who played the sister of the shower murder victim, they don't say Marion Crane, but it's that's her name, recreate their memorable roles from the original. In addition, movie buffs will be heartened to know that the producer of the film was Hitchcock's first assistant director in Psycho, and their director is a serious Hitchcock scholar. The result is a movie that the New York Daily News has called a winner, and KABC TV describes as even more intense than the original. I don't know what the fuck that is. Eight, 1983, your thoughts? My thoughts on this movie, uh, I have like um, a, a, like a real like nostalgic thing with this movie. Um, I was always like, uh, my uh, grandparents uh, were musicians and artists and everything like that. So that like, explains so much. Uh, no, no, no. But like, the, but they had a record <laughs> collection too, downstairs. But they also had VHS. Thought like, I'd give you some. They had VHS things. things and like things they had dubbed, it, and I found a dubbed oh, VHS tape of a uh, Psycho Two when I was a kid, and uh, I watched it because I take see it off it. HBO or something. No, 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 no. This was my grandparents. Oh, your grandparents uh, actually dubbed the movies they rented. That's yeah, cool yeah, 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 yeah. And no, my 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 family's hip. Uh, I got I, I got lucky with there. I got lucky with the you two VCRs. We, two we, we weren't rich, but we were cool. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm the lamest one. Uh, but uh, that explains uh, so much. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm I'm the lousiest one. Uh, but uh, black sheep. Uh, but uh, they had a copy of uh, Psycho Two in my grandparents' basement and everything, and it was a finished basement and everything. It was very nice wood panels. It was very very nice. Bougie. Uh, very very middle class when there was one. 8 uh, p.m. is 5 p.m. in L.A., right? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, okay, because yeah, yeah, that's sure. when that's when Meg from Sleepaway Camp is going to do the interview. But right? but this movie, I watched it, and I watched it when I was a kid, and I was like, I'd already seen the first Psycho, and it was black and white, and I was like, oh, God, it's color, and it's just as creepy. They they use the color to Isn't pop. Isn't it weird that Janet Lee showed more tit <laughs> than Meg Tilly? Well, <laughs> yeah, she yeah, didn't. Yeah. I mean, there's more tit in the movie. But, but this movie is really good. Yeah, this it is in Meg Tilly's tits, as a though. kid and everything, it's and it's a very, very yeah. good film. But you see some side boob on the Janet Lee Yeah. Scene. Mm. Oh, you do. Yeah, that's true. So, am I starting? Uh-huh. We see the famous Bates Motel sign. We see the whole shower scene, I think. And then... Yeah, we do. Oh, well, not... Yeah, I mean, so... Because I put two. in this kill count, technically... I mean, it is on screen, so it counts as a kill for me. Every t- I, I mean, I, this is something I've seen, you know, a good ten times in my life. And every time, it's like, this is really good. <laughs> it's like, it, it looks great. <laughs> I don't like a lot of cuts in my wrestling, but I like a lot of cuts in the Hitchcock shower scene. We're at the Kern County Court. Vera Mile or Vera Miles playing Lila Lumas, Lima Lila Crane is there with a petition because they're about to set Norman free and she's there to stop it. You can't let this psycho back on the streets. Um but the judge's like, Hey, 
dude, did you tell this lady this it doesn't matter here? And he's like, yeah, I told her. She's doing it. <laughs> I told her. She didn't care. And then she's out. <laughs> yeah, I told her. <laughs> she knows. After Norman is freed, she's then arguing with Dr. Robert Loja. Um, he's, she's like, the blood's all going to be on your hands if he kills anybody again. And they just take him back to his fucking murder house. Yeah. Yeah, and he's got a bag full of groceries. Be, he'll um, be okay there. It's kind of like in Strange Lip- Land when they take it back, right back to his old Psycho house. Psycho 2, like, brought to you by Lipton's right Tea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, we see that Mr. Toomey is now running the motel. Who's NYPD Blue now? Yeah, he was the guy from NYPD Blue. And he's in a lot of stuff. I'll talk about it later in Emily. <laughs> Emily's going up. to the litter box. So... Um, Norman's like, holy <laughs> shit. And I didn't see it. I bet it was there, but he saw somebody in the window. And he's like, there was somebody in the window. And the doctor's like, uh, you know, chill. And he, the doctor's also like, when they get up in there, he's like, I can get you a place in town. <laughs> well, the doctor's Norman's like, want to get wanna, up in there. Norman's like, I want to stay here. This is good. And the doctor yeah, is yeah. like, okay. But as soon as the doctor leaves, Norman finds his first note from his mother. There's these notes he gets uh, and signed it begins by his a mother. New. It's starting back. He gets an auditory flashback. He sees his young self in the door handle, which opens. And a hand flops down, showing where he poisoned his mother when he was young. Um, he drops the suitcase down the stairs. And then, and, oh, okay, so that's like furthering the plot, too, as well. Like, uh, of the first psycho. Yeah. Like, you know, like, that's like adding more to it. This is what makes this movie good. Like, I've seen, like, Psycho 3 and in Psycho... In uh, the first psycho, does it mention them? He murdered his no, mother? no, no, it doesn't. No, when yeah. he was a kid. No, like that's, that, that's what the, I. I really like Psycho Two. Psycho Three is the one on the radio, See, whatever, I kinda, which I, I like. But he, he becomes, but, but he becomes the hero in that one, where he helps like, uh, like solve a, uh, like a copycat murder. Well, in this one, he's basically. I mean, he doesn't really do anything. Sure, one, yeah, 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 like, uh, but um, no, um, the develop. Uh, Development of him poisoning his mother is is flesh Yeah, they didn't one. do that till yeah. the second one. They and don't it's that tea box. That. The antique tea box is the one that has the poison tea. In yeah. It. Well, the first the first movie was he based it off of Ed Gein, whose mother yeah. I believe whose whose mother died. Did he only kill like Ed, two persons or one? Person? one like two. One. Think, two. He gutted one, but he killed. I think he killed two. But um, his mom died of just an illness, and and that's what I would assume Ed she Gein, died. He was of, a nice yeah. boy. No, he wasn't. Very quiet. Um, so we go to see his new job at the diner. Meg Tilly, I think, is one of the most fascinating women of the 80s. I think she's hotter than her yeah. sister. She's her older sister. My my room. One of my roommates walked by and he's like, "Oh, that's like the 80s Aubrey Plaza." And she's kind of got that vibe. There's like yeah, something yeah. mysterious yeah. about her. Uh, were you about to ask who my roommate is? Not. Nah. So he bumps into Meg Tilly and she drops a pie and she's about to get yelled at by the by her bo- their boss, but Norman's like, Oh, it's my fault. Nice you know? guy. Norman is sweet, man. <laughs> he he's, is. He plays the He's Apparently the not same. easy to work with though. Well, Meg Tilly and him we, did not get along because she had never seen Psycho. Anthony Perkins. She had, she had, she said that she had well she didn't wasn't allowed to watch T V when she was little, which is weird that her and her sister are actresses. But she went on to watch TV, so she had never seen Psycho, so she didn't understand what the big like hoopla w- was with this movie. And this, when he heard her say that, um, it pissed him off. And he, you know, he, then he was like, he wanted, he tried to get her fired from the movie. Really? Uh huh. Oh, Fuck him. Yeah. Well, I was glad you Doesn't he look like his head? His head is so much smaller than the rest of his body. Is it no. just me? His body is pretty lanky. I, I mean, I always said he had like kind of like a uh, cab door ears, like cab door. Going, I mean, his his whole body is very lanky. I would expect him to have a. Small I mean, head. he's a great actor. Yeah. Mm. Oh, he's so good in that movie with um. Paul Newman, where I can't remember what they're like. He's uh, he uncovers some bullshit. I don't remember. Tre- uh, Treasure of the Sierra Spartacus. No. And I love Treasure of the Sierra Spartacus. Like, mm-hmm. That the movie old, is the old fucking prospector, amazing. Yeah. Like uh, jo- Walter Houston, John Houston. Yeah, 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 it's He's definitely amazing. John. Uh, one of my favorites is um, um, uh, We don't need no stinky badges. The uh, what? Is it, the African Queen. I've never watched that, but this it's book, great. book um, about Catherine Hepburn wrote a yeah, book yeah, about yeah. making it that I throw away all the time. And, we get and, and Vogue. You want a book about it? No, no, no. Oh, like come on, you need more I've stuff. It. It's great. It's, so, it's called WUSA is the movie that he's in with uh, Paul up? Newman. That's really good. 
He, uh, WSA is a radio station, in, and Paul Newman's supposed to work for this conservative, really conservative radio station that ends up being like owned by the Ku Klux Klan. But <laughs> Anthony Perkins works as like a all? he's a census taker, and he starts realizing that he's just he because he's doing the census with mostly African American community, and like he starts realizing they're not like how the town really is, and he's like a, trying to uncover it. Okay. And, Paul Newman's, and Paul right Newman's here. not a conservative, but he's like, it's a job, whatever. I don't fucking care. He, anyway, he gets killed at the Anthony Perkins gets trampled to death. Oh, well. So, Anthony Perkins' job, well, Norman's Paul job. Paul Newman just leaves at it, the and he's like, I have a new, new job. He's running the cast. He's running the cast. He's, uh, he's giving the waitresses the orders in the window and reading off the tickets to the cook. He's running the pass, which is a really important spot in any restaurant, but especially in a Expo? diner with one cook. Expo, yeah. But uh, we see that Mary has a shitty boyfriend she's fighting with also on the phone. Also a little lamb. And a little lamb. And <laughs> she does Norman's so. being really nice. And she doesn't have a place to stay because her boyfriend kicked her out because he got a new piece. Um, so he, Norman's like, oh, you can stay at my hotel I own free of charge. F-O-C. I thought that was cute. He's like, also, did you notice that they don't say this explicitly, but he does not put her in the same room as Mary as, uh, Marion Kramer's yeah, he, in? He, he purposely like, does is about to grab that. that key, but then goes down to six. But because um, that was room one, I think they're going to his place. There's a storm, and they get in, there's a confrontation with Toomey, and where he sends Mary up to the house and finds out that Mister Toomey is running like a sex and drug adult hotel. He says later, well, and he fires Toomey. He's like, you need just, to be out he, by tomorrow. He's running, he's running it out for like you know two hours at a time and shit. Yeah, but I think there was just like. Empty. There's drugs in an There's ashtray or something, in ashtray and then, in the yeah. office. But he says something about you know the hourly rates, because for prostitutes, I guess. Yeah, but uh, he fires yeah, to me. He's like, be right. gone by tomorrow. This is not a big city either, so I don't oh, know no, like, no, why they need a hotel. It's in like California. This. I know that. Hey man. Dude. So he goes they back. Constructed and, the house for the movie. Turn and burn, man. He goes back to the house with Mary, <laughs> and she calls Scott, her boyfriend. It's the best way to make money. Not and uh, I forgot to Everybody's mention. making money. Oh, uh, yeah. Psycho 2 brought Except to you by John. Quaker Oats. Yeah, and yeah, the, yeah, the mark. Brought to you by prostitution. He's been <laughs> making some sandwiches. <laughs> Everything. One of the oldest jobs. He sees a knife in the but drawer. That's carpentry. But then lies about it and says he doesn't have a knife. A doctor, cook, prostitute. Carpenter, prostitute. First two jobs. Uh, cook. Farmer. Uh, priest. Farmer before a cook. Midwife. Priest. No, somebody ate some before they farmed it. Hunter. How would they have ever Guys, eaten the if first no one jobs were hunters it? and it was gatherers. Growing hunters and gatherers it. were the first okay, jobs. Okay, the first those were the first two jobs in hunters and gatherers. Uh, yeah. And then they were like, man, you ever and had then a barbecue? They, then there was like <laughs> magic man. <laughs> what right? if we lit what it on fire? <laughs> They're called artisans, bro. Uh, well, hey, me and Emily were talking. They're called makers, you fucking <laughs> asshole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me and, and me, me and Emily were getting there, dude. We were, we're talking, talking 2023. No, you're they talking to yourself. You're, <laughs> <laughs> you're Norman Bateson over here. Yeah, dude. Now go on. Yes, mother. Okay, mother. Yes. No, I'm. Dead. I'll just talk to my real mother while you guys are sinning. Get over there with your voices. That's a lie. I'm eating fries. Yeah, I can hear it in yeah, my headphones. Like I, I see those notes in front of you. Why don't you get you're, back to you're, them? You're talking while eating the fries. What? You're Say to my fucking face. He's talking about me. Oh. Are you eating fries, Nick? No. You don't even like fries. I'm not, not really. Or milk. You don't like milkshakes. Mm -hmm. no. Chicken nuggets. You don't like he only eats nuggets. broccoli, cabbage, eggs, <laughs> and... Beans. You eat fart food. <laughs> fart food. You oh, fart, asparagus. You fart like he said, no, you, the other day you were like, I don't eat chicken nuggets. You're like, oh, I forgot you were healthy. And I was like, no, he's not. <laughs> like, what do you live off of? What is your a normal go to? Do you eat salads? Ow. Yes. Every day? No. What do you eat on, more than What's your else? normal eat? Uh, dinner. Uh, like um, rice and beer. <laughs> rice and what? Ri rice, uh, fish, uh, or, uh, rice, it's fish, beer. and like greens. Like uh, leafy well, greens. See, I love visit me some fish. fish. I, I really like some mustard greens and uh, Kroger. What? You get tilapia from the Kroger. Mm, Salmon's no. the best. Well, I, I love salmon, but I don't eat that a lot. Oh, um, it, it's too. usually um, like Gordon's a, a fried. whiting or something like that. A Is what? it like a, fried, a, a frozen fried fish? 
But yeah, or unless I can get like well, a really so decent piece of so cod or something for my, nuggets. I like, like flounder a lot. Yeah. No, I, I, fish do. I like flounder a lot. I like all fish. Uh, Me too. Yeah. Do you ever get Gordons? But I mean, I, I, oh, I, do, I do bake chicken a lot and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, it's great. Like, it's. It you should try this good. baked salmon with um. At, you put you marinate in apple jelly, Ooh. champagne vinegar, and um, horseradish. That sounds expensive. Man, I've been it's doing. Not. I've been doing this cool thing of chicken thighs, uh, like skin, bone in. Uh, with uh, yogurt, you marinate them in yogurt. Oh, and, like, no, I've heard that about that. It's supposed to be good. I don't like cumin. Like cumin curry. Though. Yeah. It's it's awesome. Dude, I've been trying to clean well, up my it's diet. Like, it's a like a little Mediterranean. I used to go to like, Burger King or Arby's for lunch every day at work, but now I go to Food City Salad Bar. Yeah, yeah. It's like no, 10 no, bucks, but I get, what I, I get all this. Don't go to Whole Foods, though, because what you pay $10 for at Food City, you're going to pay like 17 for. Yeah. And they have that hot bar. It's like, oh, I guess I want some fried egg rolls in my salad. <laughs> Fucking oh, yeah. Bezos. Anyway, on with the movie. So Onward Soldiers. Brought to you by Quaker Oat Psycho 2. Lipton T presents the knife in the drawer that Norman then lies about. Which Big Tilly Mary then finds it and gives it to him and he acts real weird with it. And she's like Well, she should not I mean she does know. They why. both lose their appetite. And she does know because I'm not going to spoil it. Oh, just go ahead. And, wait, it's okay. a thing, but... This is Lila's fucking daughter. Yeah, so, and they've been planning all he this already. He killed her aunt. Yeah. Marion. Mm hmm. But I think she was a baby or something. She wouldn't have been born. God, she's hot. <laughs> yeah. No, I, Mary and I Lila, her Lila, Lila did not have a kid when Psycho 1 came out. This is 22 years later. What do you think she is in this movie? Like 21? 20, 21. She probably had the kid like a year after. Well, he tells her that she was he was lo he tells her that he was locked up for poisoning his mom. He doesn't really bring up. Yeah, he didn't say that he, that killed, he killed her, her aunt, <laughs> but he doesn't know if she's her. He thinks she's lo Mary. God, uh, I forgot he only killed two people. Well, I mean, in the first one, we only really know he killed one person. His mom. We don't know that till the second yeah, one. Yeah, but he exactly, killed yeah. Marion. He killed. He I just, shower killed that's her. what I just said. I said. I didn't realize till just now that Psycho really only has one kill in it. Yeah. Two, if you count the mom, that you don't know. Oh, yeah. you, but no, I'm yeah. saying if, oh, we've addressed this, Mike. In the first movie, though, God damn it, where we don't God damn know, it, man. So really, it's, there's just one kill. That's weird. I didn't ever think about that. Well, he talks we're, her to we're stay. We're with it. There's only one kill too. Yeah, yeah. He talks well, her I mean, to stay. Well, that's Hitchcockian. Yeah. Yeah. It's all, it, how many people die in birds? The birds, though, more than one. There's definitely one. Yeah, but that fire, that car blows up. Oh, but there's and then a, a couple lady people with their get their eyes. eyes they people get their eyes pecked out. I think so there's the eyes a few. pecked out kills you. <laughs> yeah, or if I you're mean, not, well, I don't if you're not like you. ah, my eyes, then you're probably dead. Yeah. You're either screaming about how your eyes get eaten by birds, or you're fucking dead. I don't know that Great or upset about it. Can that. you sleep if your eyes have been eaten by birds? Just like you sleep. Yeah, it's just like empty socket. You just sleep. you've lost you think, your you've lost well, your sight forever. That do you think no. any, do you think people with no eyes close their eyes to sleep? Or they sleep with no eyes? What are you fucking talking? They always about? wear eye patches. I feel like. Well, some people lose both eyes. You think people eyes. take their Nobody eye... wears two eye patches. Okay, like when people lose their Jordy eyes, they... No, they wear sunglasses. They either... When people lose their <laughs> eyes, they either, eye, they either get their eye shut, like, stitched up, they or they those, get a glass they eye. They get those marbles in there. My grandpa had one of those. He used to no. chase this around with his false teeth and his, his eye. <laughs> he used to make you suck on it. <laughs> it my dad's a, brother... One of my great uncles had turkey feet for some reason under the couch. And then he <laughs> scared the fuck out of me. eye marble around your, your fucking mouth God, for a scary while. Kentucky <laughs> turkey feet. No, my dad's brother got his eye knocked out. One of, <laughs> one of my dad's brothers sorry, got his eye knocked sorry, out. Sorry, Uncle Tom. Sorry, Heather. One of my dad's <laughs> No, listen, my dad's brother. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> this is the most off the rails crazy episode we've ever Amy, had. Amy, we're not professional. It's all for you, Fuck Heather. you, man. Okay, my dad's brother, Gary, he just dead, so R.I.P. But, um, Rest in he peace, got his eyes, he, he's a lot younger Gary, than my Gary, we miss you. I he's a lot younger you. than my dad, but, um, he got his eye knocked out when he was little by their, one of their other brothers, I think it was Larry. You but, don't um, have me, do you? No, he threw a rock at it. Oof. And, um, my, uh, my dad's parents were like really hurt? bad ah, or like abusive and shit and um they fucking beat the shit out of Larry for knocking his eye out and they beat the shit out of him for crying 
Yeah. Because his fucking eye was dangling out. Anyway, he had a glass eye. Don't be a pussy. He had a glass eye, and they were poor, so I feel like uh, usually we get a glass eye, or they would sit your whole like socket up. They're not just gonna leave you there with holes. So you're saying that they don't close their eyes when they sleep? <laughs> Do they take their fake? I know they. I've seen my grandpa take That's his fake. I never eye. saw Gary take. I never saw he Gary take. them down at the quarry. Gary oh, never dude. took his eyeball an out. Empty eye, an empty eye socket is so pink and like juicy. Look at this gross. <laughs> it's called it's skull fucking Mike. <laughs> no. Look that, it up. Yeah, you want to skull fuck your uncle? You, you gotta be skull <laughs> fucked by somebody with a small penis. I know that. <gasps> okay, what? Where were we talking about Psycho 2? Yeah. Hold on, let me find my spot. <laughs> you were at Meg Tilly <laughs> being, I don't Five know. Five minutes later. <laughs> Why did that come up? Now figure that out. And then. Figured what out? Sorry, Heather. Do you sleep when your eyes. Oh, we were talking about how there's only one kill in Psycho. Do bees sleep? <laughs> <laughs> They used to. I tried to at work this week. There's a sick carpenter bee, and I like tried to nurse it back to health with like sugar Mike, and water and bees, agave. No, nectar. Mike, bees bees have a lifespan of like a day. No, carpenter bees is a year. No, that's not true. Well, she honey, just, honey bees, as soon as they sting you, they die. Basically, uh, I don't think carpenter bees only are. female carpenter bees sting, and they're normally not seen outside of their nest. Well, that's not true the because I've gotten stung by a lot of bees. Carpenter, it's usually for bees it's only because you shit in the yard. It's honeybees, I guess. Yeah, honeybees. When we were kids, we used to step on them. Me too. Well, no, I would step on them all the time because I would. On them. But that's I'm allergic to them. And I'm allergic to them. So oh, I last time it happened. Did you puffy? Yeah, last time it happened, I was actually an adult. And I was wearing shoes, but it was like they were sandals. Yeah. And um, I it got so bad I had to be on crutches for like so three days. So if you're allergic to bee stings, are you also allergic to like hornets and wasps? No, and shit like that? not necessarily. It's just honeybees. Mm-hmm. They got special. But I don't. I don't take my chances with wasps or hornets, nerds. so I don't think I've gotten stung by either of those. This week on Emily's new but. podcast, when I wake in the morning and I step outside, <laughs> <laughs> and it's Emily. Da da da. Mm. That's Take the end a of the deep day. breath and I don't get high. What's going on, I dog? I'm trying to talk about this. I don't What's, like up? It, mate. What's up? What's up with that? Movie? What's, <laughs> up? What's up with that? Give me some more. This is Emily's new podcast. What's, What's up with that? <laughs> What's up with that? So that's an SNL skit. Oh, wait, uh, that oh, that's, up that's, up oh yeah. That? What's up with that? What's up with that? Oh shit, we're gonna get sued. Um, Mike, go. Yeah. Kale or so, Keenan, whatever your name is. Stop. I, I like leafy greens. I bet you're regular because of it. So, Do it. So, Norman talks her into saying, even though she was freaked out and acting like she was going to go to her girlfriend's house. You couldn't see my quotation fingers, but they were there. And uh, she like goes into the mom's room. He's like, no, not there. And she's like, oh, is this where the bad things happen? And yeah. He's yeah, like, yeah. She, she, she just goes in anyway. And it, it looks like a pretty nice room. Um, but that's where he poisoned her, I guess. Then he takes her to her room. You hear an owl. Um, she has a chair propped up against her door to keep him from being able to come in. Um, then they're at work the next day. Mary's late because she... Wake up, wake up, wake up. It's a person in the <laughs> Hope everybody had a good May Day and Walpurgis is not. Um, it's gonna be May. She has... Decided she's moving in with her friend. And Norman is chopping some lettuce for a long time when Toomey shows up and harasses Mary and says he wants some of what um, Norman got last night. You know what I'm saying? Mm, that Norman, pussy. Norman's chopping some lettuce of his. And Norman's like, you know, just doing his... The knife or whatever, because the knife. Yes, the knife. But uh, there's a note on the wheel, the order wheel. There's a note for the mother, like, don't let that little whore... In my house again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he this, thinks this that shit's creepy as fuck. Norman man. thinks that Toomey has placed it there to fuck with him, and he sees that Toomey is still fucking with Mary. So he comes out of there like a bat out of hell, like I'm gonna fuck you up, Toomey. And Toomey like sees the knife. Norman sees the knife, and he doesn't grab it. Yeah. Again, Toomey's like, oh, I guess he only attacked the, the girls. romance of the knife. Yes. Romancing the night. Romancing it's the, the same night. thing as Romancing the Stone. It's the sequel. Same movie. It's the same movie. Yeah, it's, like, like, it's exactly like Make War of the Roses. Are you single? Do you That's need a big bear in your bed? 
So, uh, in the oh. in the process of he burn he somehow burns his boss. And Timmy does back off, and He's Mary is wiping. Track, but fuck, sorry, after, Heather, you gotta pay a little bit more for that. After the altercation, Mary is wiping the sweat from anymore. Norman's brow. Oh, thank you, man. How tender. Oh, tender. Very. She starts feel. She starts having feel feels for him. Well, the note's gone, and we know Mary. Well, later on, we figure out Mary took it <laughs> because she wrote it and put it there. Um, Norman gets the rest of the day off. And later on in the evening, Mary shows up again. And she's going to stay there because her friend is fucking in the room with her and it's too loud. And she brings him some of Grandma's fudge and <laughs> gonna, goes to take a shower. We see that there's a peephole looking into the shower. Got some fudge and during that. the shower, we do see some, we see full frontal without her head and we see a bum without her head because, it's again. It's a body double. I want to know what you look like, Meg. Jesus, Meg. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, and, uh, somebody calling. She knows that it wasn't Norman looking in the people because she goes downstairs and he's halfway through Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata. Couldn't have been him. And then Toomey's hollering up at the house and there's a call from the mother. It's the first time there's a call from mother. It's Lila most of the time. Lila Loomis, my yes. love. Crane, whatever you want to call her. We see Toomey packing up his shit, getting all his crack pipes and booze bottles together. When he's attacked by the mother, it's like, ah, uh, is that Norman? What's happening? The doctor shows up the next day, and Norman's telling him how he quit the diner and works. He's running the motel now because he fired Toomey for trying to turn it into a hooker junk. Oh, he did. He didn't try to. He actively done it. <laughs> Excuse me. up and done. And you know what? They don't really tell. They don't really talk about what did these people do? Because you know he was drugs it, and it, fucking. It, oh, not that. Not like that, Mike. Um, what everybody. What does. I was saying was, they are people that know of this place as being the place where you go to do this. So they never show anybody showing up trying to be like, hey, so I want my two-hour room. Yeah. Like, it doesn't really seem to like... It's not real busy, though. It's a it's, a, it's out in the middle of fucking nowhere. I don't, outside of probably town. Probably outside of Bodega. I mean, you gotta think, like, uh, like, hookers, like, know a place. It's like the hookers in Don't, um, Don't Torture a Duckling when they just, like, show up. It's like a big deal. Yeah, they show up in the town. And that's watching. the only place there wants to go <laughs> when they come in town when once... When the loose ladies blow when into they, town. When they blow Let's in once a year. the magician's bar. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, my God, the, the whores are coming into the town. The Bates Motel has a season. <laughs> And yeah. it's one day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's one day out of the year they make but, but thousands watch of out. dollars. Don't take a shower. Yeah, don't. You know, they're allowed to fuck and everything. Yeah. Just don't so, take a shower. Whatever you do, ladies, don't clean up. They they actually just took the showers out. <laughs> He'll sink. <laughs> they your car. they have a hose outside they can use. <laughs> yeah. Spray it off and get the fuck out of there. <laughs> so the, the don't doctor... knock on the on the door. Do not go up to the house. Yeah, yeah. Don't fuck with don't that. Go in the house. <laughs> Uh, the doctor finds out the, about Mary as well. And he's like, there's been a lot of changes in your life in the last week, Norman. There's something about Mary and... Yeah, there is. Mary in this movie. Mary. There's something about Mary. And everybody's I, got it. I wish it had Meg Tilly in it instead of Cameron Diaz. Oh. There's something about Mary. I wish that that movie didn't exist. It sucks. So. She hates the Fairleys. What do you do? Uh, well, I don't think they're it's, really like her. not for everybody. The Singletons are better. Is John Singleton one of them? Yeah. He's dead. What? John Singleton died last year. Holy shit. She's more of a Zucker Brothers kind of guy. I like dead I'm not. I'm not any kind of brothers person. <laughs> but you're a kind of guy. I don't like guy. the Cohen Brothers really, no. <laughs> Except for I like old No Country for Old Men. It doesn't seem like a Cohen Brother movie. You know. Doesn't feel like one to me. It feels like a Cormac McCarthy. This doesn't feel like we're in a written psycho. Does this feel like a Psycho <laughs> 2 podcast? Sorry, Heather. We're, we're doing all we can, Captain. Heather, if you've listened this long, you're in it for the long haul. <laughs> you're getting the real treatment. <laughs> this isn't what it's like to be friends with us, sorry. <laughs> this is what our cigarette breaks sound like. <laughs> yeah, we're all smokers. If y'all don't like it, leave the room. <laughs> we don't smoke inside. I don't smoke in my house. Oh, it's yeah, the proverbial room. Disgusting. Not the actual room. Oh, yeah, like outside. No, we, we trip the light. Do you, smoke, do you guys smoke in your cars? Yeah. 
That's my personal That's like my main thing. place. Yeah, I love I it. So I like smoking I my car it. more yeah, than anything. Me too. It's my It'll favorite work. place to do it. Also, and they don't smell it. And none of the things. kids smell it on me either. Like, uh, because I you care. You can let it get too ashy. No, it's because you leave a window open and you the and you have spray. And the main place you spray your hair and your hand that you were holding the cigarette with. Because your hand Wait. it carries the most I they uh, smell. smell in your car. And that's how you do it, kids. You... Well, yeah. I mean, if you keep the window, I don't, I don't ever smoke with the window closed or and even crack. You want to smoke like, smokes I have, around your I have, uh, like, at least that much done. open. Like, I don't like, even like with the rain. Though. I don't, like, hold it out. In the, ra- in the oh, rain. Oh, you don't like, like that bitchy little, like, like a little uh, pinky finger out? Like, you're drinking Only if I'm drinking, like, tea. I did that. No, I actually, one time I saw this. I hold my window out the whole way on the interstate. It's like, oh, yeah. One time in high school, I was, like, driving around in Maryville, and I saw this really trashy girl in high school with, and she was driving around with her foot out the fucking window with a cigarette in between her toes. No, that's not bad fucking ass. joking. Fucking <laughs> legend born. It's the in fucking Maribel, yeah. All right. Where were we? Okay. Get so, the baby. The doctor is there and he sees the lady in the window and he's like, Norman, I just saw some lady in the window and it looks like the mother, but he, Norman's just thinking he's talking about Mary. So Mary finds the peephole, and when she talks to the doctor, she doesn't mention it. She doesn't really let on that she's a little freaked out about it. But she thinks it's Norman at this point. When the doctor gives Mary yeah, a Yeah, because her work, mom's a fucking cunt. And then the doctor goes to the sheriff. Have you met Norman's mother? I really love how Lila, Lila was such a protagonist in the original Psycho, and in this movie, she's a fucking awful oh, human she's, being. She's definitely she's the antagonist. so horrible in this movie. But she was like, she's, you feel so bad for her in the first one. And yeah. then this one, you're like, fuck you, girl. Like In this movie, you feel bad for Norman. Fuck you, girl. Yeah. You feel bad for Norman. He's <laughs> well, just think, trying. Yeah, yeah, no, you feel bad. I feel bad for He's so nice to Mary. But see, I feel like, bad for Norman in the original Psycho too, though it's because I, 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 I mean he's as a creepy person. Do you guys think that for most of the movie, maybe there's a couple times, but do you think Norman really is either. creepy to Mary? Do you mean you think we're saying, creepy or do you, no? Wait. Do I think that Nor? Do you? I'm you creepy. Wait, wait, no, no, no. You said as a creepy person. Yeah, yeah, yeah as a creepy I'm person. Glad you caught I'm that. asking you guys: Is Norman creepy to Mary? Well, well, no, so no, no, you no, think no, you're no, creepy? Is what you're saying? I think the other. People might think I'm creepy. Okay, all right. I feel creepy sometimes. <laughs> what do you do that you think is creepy? Uh, talk about in his own come. Uh, no, that, no, no, that no that's not message. creepy. There's nothing creepy about it. That weird text oh, message you said. Creepy, creepy, creepy involved. Rubbing my people. leg for no, no, no reason no, no, that no, I didn't no. remember about. Stop. Cre- creepy <laughs> involved. Yeah, you need to stop that. Uh, creepy involves other people, and that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> like that, that was instant that creepy. Was a so joke. as a creepy person, go ahead. I know it was a joke, Mike. Is Norman creepy to Mary? No. He's very kind. He's very nice. And there's one scene later. <laughs> it's like he's trying to get over his... There's one scene later. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, that might go ahead I mean, up. in the original one, he it is... It almost cr- seems like she is falling in love with him. No, she is. She totally is. And in the first she one, never, I, She never just says and, that you can see it in her eyes kind of thing. And because the first, Mike it, okay, an amazing I'll, actress. A, I don't think that like the type of disorder that he has mentally, where um, he's a split personality and becomes his mother, is something that um, he could be rehabilitated for in real life, but... For the movie's sake, he is rehabilitated. Yeah. However, he's trying. In the first one, yeah. in the first one, I feel bad for him because when he kills Marion, that he that is not him. He is his mother. He is his mother. When yeah. he kills her, and I feel like he's a sympathetic character psycho. in the original because the him as his mother is awful. But and when it's when it's when, when it's when it's him himself, he's a really sympathetic character. Because he at the, the only time he's creepy he's is at boy. is at the very end when but it's his but he's turned into his mom. Oh, when he's like, I like, wouldn't even touch that fly. I wouldn't am even I hurt that fly. Again, and she's like, no, no, and he's like, you're trying to trick me. And he's like, oh, I thought yes, you were talking about the end. I thought you were talking about the end of the original. No, I think I'm saying that the the only time he's creepy is at the end of the original Psycho. In the original Psycho, that's the only time he's creepy, and that's because it's his mom. Towards the end of this movie, where he's like, why did you stop doing what your mother was doing? And he's like, is it? The reason I think, and she's like, "What's the reason you think?" But you know that she knows what he's thinking. What's he thinking? Because she loves it. He's asking her, and <coughs> oh, she yeah, loves yeah, it, yeah. and she won't say it. And then she won't say it to the cop because, like, the well, cop's the like, cop "Why are you still here?" Sarah. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting way ahead of this. Anyway, <laughs> how long are we? All right, we need to just go. Book him, right. Dano. So the doctor, <laughs> the doctor sees. Aloha. What is that from? Hawaii. 
Oh, yeah. The doctor goes to the sheriff and wants the it's phone all over this show. tapped. But uh, the sheriff won't tap the phone. But he's going to dig into these people. Why? Why will he not just tap the phone? It's just... Well... I guess no one's been killed. Well, Toomey's been killed, but no one's found him. Norman so. is Or pinned. has he been killed yet? <clears throat> Toomey's dead. Okay, so we're at least like 40 minutes into the movie. Because he doesn't die. We don't have really our first death till like 40-something minutes into the movie. So at this point, Norman's paying the motel when there's the, like a really elongated older woman in the window, which is Mary. It's Mary in the window, dressed like his mom. And he goes to check it out, and <coughs> her room is all fixed up. Like, it, it, when we've seen it before, it's like all kind yeah, of Yeah, there was like up, co- stuff covered up. up. Well, there was like sheets covering the verge or stuff. But when he goes in the next time, it's... It's supposedly. been it's been recreated look like it did before. Yeah. Like when he was a kid, and he finds yeah. a, a note saying that if he doesn't get rid of Mary, his mother's going to kill him. Signed in. And why would Lila do that when that's her Mary fucking did, daughter? Right? No, I mean I know Mary's, that. Oh yeah, Mary's But why totally would you be playing? Why would you do like put your yeah? You're putting your fucking daughter. Why wouldn't he just say kill like the fucking owner of the of the restaurant? So somehow he gets up to the attic and gets locked in and falls asleep. No, it's um, because he gets locked in around the time. That's was it, that's how we find out because it's his alibi for the boy getting murdered. Well, he goes in, he, but he goes up in the attic and then tries to get out, but it's locked. And then because Mary kid, locked her in there. Yeah, he Mary him locked in him in there. Unbeknownst to him, Mary's going to act like she didn't do it. Meanwhile, kids are breaking into the basement to smoke a joint and fuck. And they, I don't know the guy, girl's name, but the boy's name is Josh. The girl's name is Kim. Okay, well, Josh is the boy. The girl doesn't die. Josh so. and Kim. So there are noises they keep hearing in this. I swear to God, I'm so pissed off. This girl is at me. This no, girl not gets at you. Gro- is getting grouped, no, but she hears a noise. Someone that's an asshole. And uh, we see a lady, and the guy's like looking at her, like, uh, and he sees the knife, and they decide to run. And the girl gets out, but the guy's trying to get out, and before he can, he is stabbed repeatedly by a somebody dressed like an old lady. And the girl runs to the cops. But Norm's asleep. Mary is calling for him, but he's hearing his mother's voice until he kind of finally gets awake and hears this. Mary, he opens the door. It's not locked anymore. He's like, oh, let's, let's go to my mother's room. It looked weird, and it's been rearranged to look like it, you, it does now. And then the cops... The cops show up because the, the girl boy. has gone and gotten them. She's staying in the cop car. They go down to the cellar, and the body's gone. There's no blood or anything. But... That's this is where Nancy uh, is it not Nancy I'm sorry this is where uh, what's Mary? her name Mary is this around this she, she she admits that they couldn't have been Nor- Norman because he was locked in the fucking attic because she locked him in the no, fucking she attic she doesn't mention the attic she says we were out all day oh it's later when he asks why she lied he yeah Norm, that's okay. she lies yeah. for Norman gives him an alibi yeah and when the cops leave he says it's all starting again. And then we see Vera arguing with the sheriff. Lila. And she's like, dredge the damn swamp. Yeah, Lila. Played by Vera Miles. Uh, and she's like, dredge the damn swamp. And Mary goes to the office to get some booze to make some Irish coffee. We see the classic stuff. I thought it was weird that he had alcohol around because he seems like a very straight-laced guy. No, he didn't. He She had to go down no, to That was the problem in the first one. He never got loose. The, yeah. He's a great guy when he gets up. But, you know, no, she had to go to Toomey's office. He had left a bottle. Oh, he had left it. Okay. And that's where her mother is calling from. So she she confronts great her mother. The and dynamic so duo. She confronts. This is where we as the audience find out that it is a plot. Yeah, that's where we find up out that point, we, she, yeah, know we didn't know that Mary Vera. was Lila's and, daughter. Yeah. yeah. Or had anything to do with anything. And she's kind of telling her mom to back Conflict the fuck up. Interest that he's changed. Called. This is yeah, where she no, starts yeah, saying she, like. Yeah, she starts. She's she's like, okay. I don't think we should do this. Because he's like, she started <laughs> nice to grow man. sympathetic for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like, he's uh, really nice and this and that. Well, and, that's the dynamic of this movie. And like, uh, and, and she, then Lila's she tells like, her fuck mom, off. I'm, this is no. where she tells her mom, like, he couldn't have done that because I had him locked in the attic. Right. Okay, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. But, but Lila's like, well, basically she's just like, fuck you then. I'm going to keep fucking with him and you're not going to do it I'm going to keep doing it because I don't like him yeah and meanwhile back up the house the fucking toilet starts making a noise and he goes to look and it just starts spewing blood all over the fucking yeah how'd she do floor. that and it back like kind of back, starts backing up into the bathtub as well because okay no, none because of this shit or he's not having those hallucinations nah, and these phone calls the actual are... killer put, did clean up 
and put the stuff in the toilet. Oh, and it's just bubbling out. Okay, yeah. I didn't. I didn't know if when that he was. When searches in the sink, the I didn't know if it was that toilet. or it, if it was old house. I know. didn't know if it was that or if it was another thing that Lila had set up because no, nothing is, that happens to him in this movie are halluc- uh, like auditory or visual because hallucinations. She confronts her in, a, in a soon-to-come scene, she confronts her mother again. Like, what was up with the peephole and the toilet? Yeah, because that's stuff. Mary's and, eye and, and the peephole. Lila's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. What happened last night? Also, I think she's she named... She did not do this. I think she's named Mary... His real mother I, did this. I think it's, it's her name is Mary because I think she named her that because of her... Marian? After Marion. Yeah. So that's why I also think she wasn't alive when Psycho 1 happened. Anyway. So, <sighs> Whatever. Mary comes back from... This is a really great sequel, by the way. Yeah, and Norman, it's it's a great film. It's like just as almost just as almost as good. I actually know what I think. I like this one more than the original. (laughs) It's really good because the original, the original. I think that end scene with you know with him with the blanket. I don't know if I would have liked as much with a different actress. I, I think Maggie Tilly is a. Great I would have, I would have because I I. If it was like who else was around that age? Well, I mean, time, like, if they would have Jennifer Connelly. If it had been you would have liked it with Jennifer Connelly. The, no, I probably wouldn't Maggie have liked. Tilly's I speaking. wouldn't have liked it as much as Jennifer if Jennifer because I don't like her. But if they had, I don't just, like her. I don't. But if they just had it's a really, it wouldn't matter if like she Jennifer was hot. Connelly's way younger. It's not about her being. You know. Yeah. It's not about her being hot. She, you have to get someone that can no, really it's not like about that, at all. It's that just can about really you like show me. that she's like, not hot. She is fucking beautiful. No, I'm, I'm saying you would, you would have to find an actress <laughs> that could embody. Hey, Mike, go on, Emily. Keep that going. could embody like a sympathy, like she does. Yeah, and I don't think that would be that hard. Because they don't only have to Norman be beautiful. Changed, like Norman changed over twenty two years in an Supposedly. institution. But maybe Honestly, you see that Mary couldn't happen. Or whatever. This, like, couple of days this is happening you know yeah because all she's been told her whole life is this horrid story from her mother and now she's meeting well, this dude point, she's and like, she's actually I'm seeing not how he for is for the dead anymore which is a great she said what she says to her mom like i'm not gonna live for dead people anymore well she shouldn't have been anyway she wasn't alive when Profound. it happened so sweet mary she starts cleaning up the mess in the bathroom Although marion was a fucking asshole stealing money she was fucking stealing money from her work and running away. Like, sorry, but yeah, like Jenny you're Lee, already like this, you're no, not no, 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 you're no. not a good person already, Marion Crane. This, this, no, you didn't deserve being, you, being stabbed to death, but yeah. I mean, I, you should, just, this is how you should totally rehabilitate somebody who's been released from uh, a yeah. psychotic murder. Yeah, well, the same thing happened in Strangely. This is like therapeutic. You, know? you think it's Desire? Uh, Dude, Strangely. Like, I wanted to mention this earlier. Strangeland. Kinda this is basically this whole thing. Yeah, I feel like D. Snyder because I mean, obviously, I mean, he What's said his name in that movie, Captain Howdy. Captain Howdy. He said, or that's not his real name. His name was like Sheldon hey, or something wee. like that. But that, when, but like, once he gets rehabilitated and taken back that, to his old house, and he's trying to do well, exactly. And it's not until somebody starts fucking with him. Well, that, they do it immediately. So I mean, there's really yeah. I don't know. He goes home for about five minutes, and then he turns into a fucking psycho again. Yeah, this conversation, yeah. I, I said that you know, I feel the same way about American Mary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a real uh, winner. No, but I yeah. feel like Dee Snyder did say that he obviously took from uh, the song, but the song he took from. The Exorcist and like something else that he should really be giving credit to Psycho too because that's basically what that movie is except for with the internet. It happens way faster. In yeah. Strangely. And he's and, and you don't have any sympathy for him. Yeah. And also he is the he is a killer but he does he's the one Norman only kills like, oh, Norman only like kills the, one uh, person in this movie. But that that was my favorite but part of his like three a- acting job in Strangeland was when he was being the nerd. I do too. But I mean, we only saw for like ten minutes. It's like total. So Mary is cleaning up the mess in the bathroom, and she notices there's an eye in the peephole, and she gets this little Derringer two two bullet tiny lady gun um, out of her purse. And she goes and checks the mom's room. She thinks she's going to see Norman. That's a horrible aim. And uh, she finds the hole. And somebody's looking through the people from the other side at her. I think it's Lila. That's when she calls Norman. Huh? I think it's Lila. Um, No, Lila had no idea about the stuff that's happening right now when she talks to her tomorrow. Oh, it was Emma. This This is his real mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, oh... Would it be weird if I went back to the diner and mentioned 
the old lady. <laughs> Yeah, there's a woman there. that that runs. And there's the also fucking, a bit. The, like she's a she's not the owner, right? Or no, she does. No, own she's it. just the old lady. No, the I guy that owns it is the yeah, cook yeah. in the back. Okay, but she there's an old woman there's that a, works at the diner. Her name is there's Emma's. an old woman, a middle aged woman, and Manny. Okay, the older woman's name is Emma's fool. She's very important later. And she's the killer, by the way. And oh, okay. she's the main killer. There are three killers. Yeah, there. I didn't do it. it. I held it. I did. There. I don't care. Miss Fool. I I don't care. It's Norma's real mom. There are um, actually there are three. So four Mary has a gun. She's state. checking the mom's room. Finds the hole. Somebody looks in on her. So she's like, "I'm gonna call my fucking mom." She calls. <laughs> I'm Norman. gonna call my fucking I'm mom. I'm calling my mom. She, well, she does. And Norman if grabs the knife. If y'all don't stop being mean to me, I'm calling my mom. People. And then I'm I would call me. my mom, and she'd be like, <laughs> "You know what she would do? What'd you do?" But Norman That's what thinks, she did. first thing she'd say, what'd you do? Well, Lila, okay, so Mary thinks it's Lila, her mom. Norman thinks it's his dead mom. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. When it is, but it is his mom. It is his mom. But not, but not the, the one that he thinks. thinks. The, not, not the one he thinks is he his thinks mom. He thinks this is his mom made <laughs> so poison when he was 12. There's so much mom shit. But Whatever. he wanted, so they get into a room and kind of hide and lock the door, and he... Watches her sleep while holding a knife. And she wakes up and is like, what the fuck are you doing? And he's like, I am confused. <laughs> and it's like, As yeah, dude, we. you are. And he gives her oh, he gives her a hug and he's like, you smell good. And she's like, oh, what do I smell like? And he's like, you smell like the toasted cheese sandwiches my mom used to make. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I thought I, it was hot. That, I thought I mean, that was hot. Okay, so like. That's the cutest thing somebody could say. If you're being compared to any kind of like cheese. No, he meant it. It doesn't matter if it's melted like, or toasted or whatever. If he was like a ladies' man, he'd be like, "You smell like strawberry vanilla." No, no. Douche. I recently watched a friend of mine uh, try to like talk to some ladies in a weird way. What did he tell me? Yeah, he, uh, he, no, he didn't say anything. But Put smell. Smells in your he ass compared like them. Cheese. He said he compared them to exotic animals, but the animal thing <laughs> turned them off very much. Do you think they would have been? Happier if he'd said he came up and said, You guys look like you, you guys look like two animals out of the zoo, but then he compared them to (laughs) meerkats. No, no, it was like very, very, I can't remember, like snow leopards, yeah, yeah, but it didn't work. Kangaroos, I was like, Oh, that's bad. What psycho's 1960, right? Kangaroo, yes, it is. I'm not sure. So, you guys want to keep going? Oh, yeah, no. So, he tells her she smells like toasted cheese sandwiches and it's very comforting to him. And that's so sweet, God. Um, and it's then weird. the doctor shows up in the morning, and the doctor lays by it all way, out. By the way, ladies, you uh, guys, Heather. I'm sorry. <laughs> by the way, men, women don't want to you to tell them that you remind them of their mom. Just FYI. But the com- no, he didn't say his mom. He said that especially it's smelling a comforting- like grilled cheese sandwiches. So this like is a mom. Wait, wait a second. This is a man who has a lot of damage from his mom. Of course. And. He didn't say you remind me of mom. He said you reminded me of when my before my mom went crazy when she He's was He's Norman Bates volume. And he <laughs> eats toast and cheese sandwiches later. It's just like his thing. It's like nostalgic to him. It's really mm-hmm. romantic mm-hmm. to me. Um Don't get him around go cheese. I could use an honest toast to cheese sandwich. Kermit I Kermit used to always have it. I would always call it grill call them grilled cheese. Norm McDonald has a bit of that. Right? Kermit, grilled cheese. Kermit would always be like Toasted cheese. Like, is that like a grilled cheese? I guess. Yeah, Kermit, I, I mean, all, yeah, it's toasted bread I and love cheese. You. I'm sorry and I forgive you. Anyway. Come on back to me, Frog Daddy. Kermit ain't coming back, man. Jim Henson died long ago. Um, he won't so to me either. The I'm doctor sorry. tells him that Mary and Lila are fucking with him. And he's like, Mary, who, do do who told him that? The doctor, oh, right, right, Robert okay. Loja. Oh, because tell- he's figured this all out. Yeah, yeah, Mary's at work, and he tells Norman, he comes to visit Norman, and he found this out. He's like, Lila has been calling you from the office of the hotel, act, act, acting like she's your mom, mm-hmm. but that's not your mom. And they go so far, wait, am I getting ahead? Well, Let's we, go. We see, <laughs> we see Mary and Lila, keep <laughs> scrolling and leave me alone. We see Mary and Lila. And it's Lila's gonna be like, that's cool, so you this is where Lila said she wasn't there last time. We already talked about it. So, and and Mary's like, I don't want to help anymore. The doctor has his fucking mom's corpse exhumed, and it's a good looking corpse. Not oh, like yeah, sexy, yeah. but like as no, far as it looks good, it's a nice effect. She's on still got it. 
So Norman then confronts Mary when she gets home and tells him the whole thing. The phone rings and he keeps saying, it's my real mother. And Mary's like, hey, we've been fucking with you, dude. That's not your mom. It's my mom. And he's like, oh. Like, that's not my mom. It's your mom. Mm. And your mom's my mom. And what? You don't say. But the cops show up right when she's trying to tell him everything. He's like, Norman, we need to go to the swamp. We're dredging it. We found the suitcase of yours with all Toomey shit in it. And Lila's trying to call her or call the house then, but nobody answered. And the doc, she starts going to the house to fuck with Norman, and the doctor is following her. He's tailing her. Um, to me, like a normal psychi- psychiatrist would. Oh, you like so, and and this is where I Mary, must know everything about them. <laughs> yeah, and then I just... love movies where the psychi. It's like the psychiatrist is the main character, and he gets two, they get two in these horror movies, two into these people. I'm like that would never That's fucking a jolly happen. Thing. Uh, they do it in, That's like, so they did it in Smile. They did it in a, oh, fuck. It's not a Giallo, but I can't remember what it was. But I'm just like, oh, that Case 39 or whatever Never with Sandra Bullock. Or I think it's Sandra Bullock. She's, no, it's not. But it's someone famous. And she's, like, got this one kid on her. You no, talking about Bird Box? About her, like, five, about that bird her, her, like box? 500 kids you that ta- she probably has about, on her, no, like, thing. No, you Speed, dude. Yeah. Um. But yeah, the psychiatrist does not have time to fucking follow people around and care that they care about it. But yeah, he's not going to fucking solve a crime. They've got psych for meds him. to use and abuse. Yeah, especially yeah. back then, Quaaludes. Hi, Katie. Bye. Yeah. Hey. We didn't kind of talk about Katie in the last two episodes. Katie, we apologize. Heather, we apologize. Heather, Mama, I'm so I'm sorry. Okay, Tupac. Go Is on. Mother's Day around now? No, it's in want, May. Oh, we, no, it is right around now. Sorry. Why don't we speed two out of this uh, back into the, the movie? It's the 14th. It's, it's in... Heather paid for this, Mike. Um, when this comes out, it will well, be she's getting She died for our sins. Lengthwise, she's getting her time. Hey. Uh, well, uh, oh, oh, uh, double on time. Okay, no, don't, no, don't. no. I, I see what you did no. there. I see what you did there, Mike. Here, read my notes. No, no, no. no. You keep that over there. I know it's sticky. So, they take Norm to the swamp, confront him with a suitcase full of... To me, shit, and then let him go. But he, uh, the sheriff, wants to talk to Mary, and Mary asked the sheriff if Norman was adopted. And he's like, I don't know anything about that, and I've been here a long my life. And he tells her to scram, get the fuck out of town. Um, and then they find she leaves when they're finding the car, and it turns out, oh, Timmy's in the trunk of the car, and people puke Oops, when they smell him. All Timmy, and uh, Lila's at the house with the doctor. Doctor watching, she goes through the. <laughs> The basement. Old Timmy. And Toomey. I know, but the way you said it. And he, <laughs> she, she gets, there's a rock that they've got the costume and the wig. Who's on SNL in 76? I've never seen that episode. And she's like trying to get the costume out so she can fuck with Norman. And she gets stabbed through the mouth by some other old lady. Oh, it's a fucking good Norman. kill. It's too. a good kill, yeah. yeah. It's, it was very not, reminiscent of the one pieces. She gets hidden in the coal pile and you see her later and she's like all... Shriveled oh, yeah. up and gray, like this when cold Mary sees her, but it was a very reminiscent kill to the one in pieces of the yeah, journalist. The uh, bed, water bed. Yep. Through the front, like from well, the yeah, back, so through the front of the mouth. In the back of the head, and the blade comes out of the mouth. Ass to mouth. Um, <laughs> kind of. I mean, it Do is. It. The ass of the knife. Hey, kids. <laughs> the mouth of the knife to the ass of the head. Read it. Uh,. Trying to make it make sense. So uh, the doctor what, goes into down? the house. <laughs> and I kind of forgot him. He goes to the basement. And Norman comes down. And Mary shows up. And she's like, Norman, we need to leave. They're coming to get you. They found a car. Let's go. And he's like, they're just going to chase us. He doesn't even want to run, you know. They embrace. He's defeated. And there's a call from the doctor saying that the calls came from the office, but he still thinks it's the mother, even though the doctor's on the phone like, Norman, I am your doctor, not your mother. He's like, yes, mother. Okay. And the mother is telling, the voice that Norman is hearing is telling him to kill Mary. So she goes and gets in the costume, goes upstairs, or sees, sees her mom in the coal pile. And... Um, she gets dressed up as the mom, tries to get on the phone to yeah. tell him to stop talking to the fucking mom. Um, but he starts coming after and she's defensively stabbing the shit out of Norman Bates. Oh yeah. Um, 
And this scene really he, scared he, like, me. He grabs the kid. knife. I bet, man. He grabs that knife and she's like trying to pull it away from him. It's just like cutting his fingers. Yeah. Uh, I hate it when people grab a knife bare handed. And Norman uncovers Lila and she sees it and she's like holding up the knife to about to stab Norman when the goddamn cops bust in and shoot Mary and pin the whole thing on her. Take that from Dorm the Dribblehead. Do you think they saw it? That's how you do it. It came out kids. before this. Yeah. Yeah, Dorm the Wind, Dorm the Dribblehead, I think, came out like a. This is like a Universal movie or some shit, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Is that a sequel uh, from the Dorm that came blood? I don't know. Tom Holland's a pretty good writer. Uh, well, the guy that wrote the book, it's... Robert Block wrote Psycho. Well, what about so? No, there was a novel. I think before it's like a this novelization. You know? No, it's not a novelization. There was a book that well, came out because they were gonna base the second movie on the book that was written, but they ended up not liking it, so they oh. changed the entire thing. He was like gonna go to Hollywood and all this shit. Gotcha. But the book it was definitely written beforehand. So, yeah, we're almost through here. Um, the cops, like, have killed Mary. You just see Norman, like, in the sheriff's office, like, drinking coffee. Like, oh, this fucking sucks. I just want to go home and take a nap. And the cops, the cops take him home. He starts shoveling coal. And it looks like he has stigmata, kind of. Because his, his wounds on his hands start bleeding while he's shoveling coal. He goes upstairs and he's eating a toasted cheese. When you see <laughs> somebody that looks like the killer. the It's an old lady in black. Approaching the house. And it's the old lady from the diner, Mrs. Spool. And she is Norman's really real mother. And um, Norma Bates, her maiden name was Spool. And it's kind of dumb that Norman didn't know who she was. And when he was less than a year old, she got locked up. And she was locked up when he was... Or, what a twist. She got out. He was already locked up. So when he he was she was there waiting for they him. They just missed each other. And she was trying to protect him from all these people that were fucking with him. And that's why she killed the other fools. And says as much. So Norman then is she he's like, Would you like some tea? And he doesn't grab the Liptons. He doesn't grab the Quaker Oats, he grabs the poison mama tea. Which he almost used in Mary. I forgot to mention that. He almost poisoned Mary at the beginning. He thought about it. And he takes a shovel and whacks this old bitch right in the back of the head and starts whistling, takes her upstairs, and you ben, start it hearing... the same song as uh, Is That Father's No, it wasn't Camtown Races. <laughs> I think it was some Beethoven. He plays a lot of Beethoven in this. But he starts hearing the voice of his mother like, oh, you better not talk... You better go for that no, motel this, and make some money. Point, and oh, don't talk at, to those women. At this point, it is... He sets his, her up in the window like she was in the first movie. It is his fucking mother's Shit is creepy fake. as... The, oh, at this yeah. point, he is starting to go the psychotic. Oh, and the vacancy so. sign comes on the base motel. Dude, and then then the last shot is him sitting uh, like so, in front of the base. Have you guys seen Psycho in front, Three? Or in front of the house. Well, we haven't gone oh, to that yet. Oh, the Psycho Three is this canon in Psycho Three? Yeah. You know how a lot of movies are like oh that shit from the. Oh, they'll be like, we're going to pretend that never no, happened no, 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 and move on. Yeah. Do all the psycho no, movies? No, I think like, I keep... think in order for to do this movie sequel, you you needed. You needed to explain, especially with how they ended it, you needed to explain how his mom died. Because yeah. because he he's he's to be seen sympathetically. So in the first one you could assume he killed like you could assume he killed her, you could assume like it you could like assume she died of death. Her because that's what Akeem did. I, I, like, when I saw it I got the yes, it's exactly that, and that's one hundred percent what that book was based off of. So also takes a chainsaw, but the book was based off of those murders. And Ed, Ed Gein didn't get a sequel, man. And he actually, like, I think Psycho yeah. most closely resembles Ed Gein out of like all the movies that were supposedly based on, like Texas Chainsaw, uh, Psycho. There's one other one that's like a big one, but a Maniac, I think, is maybe well, one of. The I don't know. He was real. Ed Gein had a lot of that. I thought no, like, dude. I thought Norman Bates was based on John Del No, but he, shit. yeah, like which but, well in the first in the original. Norman Bates is into uh, toxidermy. Taxidermy. 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 I'm sorry. Toxidermy. I was just thinking about toxic adventure. But, um, yeah. Uh, were you? So, you were thinking about toxic. No, 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 I, 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 I think the, the heavy, heavy 
amount of or the long amount of time they spend on letting you know that Norman Bates is it likes to be a taxidermist or whatever. Yeah. I, that leads me to believe that there's a room with fucking skin in it. Okay. And also, Ed Gein was a very awkward, shy person, as is Norman Bates, and as is as was Anthony Perkins. Leatherface is kind of shy. Well, Leatherface had mentally. He was. Mentally Don't talk about Bubba like that. Don't talk about Bubba like that. He was the same. Whatever. What um, was kill count. Kill we didn't. Count? We didn't talk about his mom or anything. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Do you want me? Okay. Let's, sorry, Heather. His no, mom shows up. It's the old lady from the diner. Emma's fool. She, she was a, she was a real... That's the uh, mother's maiden name. Norman should have figured this out. She was institutionalized for some reason and had to give her When kid he was up. less than a year old and... She gave her kid up to her sister. When she got out, he was already in. So but she was there waiting she, but for him. Did she say why she was institutionalized? She said that they had a similar problem but we can talk we don't have to talk she about that okay she was a killer she was a psycho killer All right, so kill count um one is oh, he kills his mom marion crane in a flashback of her shower death from the original psycho two is warren toomey who stabbed to death by ms fool three is josh who was stabbed to death by ms fool four is lila who stabbed in the mouth and through the back of her neck by ms fool five is dr raymond who stabbed in the back accidentally by mary Six is Mary, who shot to death by the police. And then seven is Emma Spool, who is bludgeoned in the back of the head with a shovel. That didn't look like it would kill you, but anyway, by Norman Bates. He hit the shit. But so, he also poisoned her. Did he? He used that poison tea in the tin. Okay. Well, my main point that I was trying to make with those kills is because I, I did the time on him. I mean, it's whatever. Like, at, the first one is until 41 minutes in. But, um,. It's just that there are four fucking killers in this movie. There's Emma Spool, there's Lila, right? No. Wait, Lila doesn't kill I'm sorry. Her. There's Mary. Mary accidentally kills the Emma Spool, the cops, and Norman Bates yeah. are all murderers in this Norman movie. Norman in the... Norman well, at the, in the end, he kills... In the end, yeah. Yeah, he kills... Yeah. Well, he's, he's mother the in the first one, but like in the second one, I, I mean, he's, I think he's just killing her, but for like turning his fucking life upside down, but that's what I would assume. Um, so well, the but he, he wanted his dead head mother, the mother inside of his head, because when he's carrying that lady upstairs and into her room, no, I know you hear the old voice, but she's not talking, you know. Head mama, dead mama live in my head, mama. <laughs> he's rapping. Okay, so <laughs> Again. I have a little bit of trivia on the movie, and then a little bit on Anthony Perkins. That's I did not know. So I think it's very interesting. I have so, a couple movies that some of the people are in. Do it real feel. quick. Vera Miles is in The Initiation. We've already covered it. Yeah, we have. She was also in Mazes and Monsters, but that was Tom Hanks' first movie, Brainwaves. Make that Tully's, was a TV movie. It wasn't his first feature film. His first feature film was He Knows You're Alone. Oh, yeah. Yep. We know that one, too. So, Meg Tilly was in this movie that fucked me up as a kid called Agnes of God. I recommend. She's in One Dark Night. Yeah, you talked and, about in the last episode. And Body Snatchers... By yeah, my man Abel Ferrara. Yeah. Oz Perkins, who plays young. That's Anthony. It's, 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 it's the flashback of young Norman poisoning his mother. That's Norman Bates' son. Uh, there's Anthony Perkins' son. And he directed The Black Coast Daughter and was in Nope. Um, I won't talk about Vera or, I'm sorry, Anthony. I've got a little shitty man. Or the um, guy that's in my PD Blue because um, he's in a shit ton of stuff. It, um, no, no, I got Robert a little shitty man that I, I did some, uh, I went down some rabbit holes and I, I found out that Anthony Perkins, um, not only was he in Psycho 2, he was in Psycho uh, 1 and uh, the rest of the franchise. Yeah. Like, uh, uh -huh. it, it, yeah. Robert Logic plays fun. the Doctors in Lost Highway. He's in this crazy voodoo movie called The Believers I Love. <laughs> Big and Scarface. The Sheriffs in Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, and Back to Future 2. Uh, the lady who played Spool was in I Was a Teenage Frankenstein and uh, Pegger and Billy the Kid by Sam Peckinpah. Um, Toomey was in Die Hard 2, Blowout, Dress to Kill, and The Fury. And yeah, YPD Blue. Yeah, it's Statler. And Little Monsters. Oh, Little Monsters. Statler, the owner of the, uh, that, the, oh, owner of the diner, was an Amityville like four. That's Myrna, the bitchy middle-aged diner lady, was in Seven Sign, the babysitter in Cobra. And Kim, the girl from the basement, was in Funland and the Unholy. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, 
I'm going to talk about Anthony Perkins first a little bit because I find this Poopy. very interesting because I didn't really know any, Did any of this. Did you know that he was in Psycho 1 and the rest mm-hmm. of the franchise? Yeah. So. <coughs> All right. I re- Let's have it. <laughs> so. Um, but don't be coy. Emily. God, okay. Um, where to begin? I Because I can't find where I wrote it down. Oh, welcome to my world. Okay. So. He was originally a, he had a contract with Paramount because he was a huge leading man in a lot of movies in like the 50s, and in the 50s. And he wasn't a villain. And even though he was like, you know, skinny and gawky, he, like he had like, he had a teen idol status. He actually went, was up for the part of two James Dean movies. But it got given to James Dean. But they, one of them was a fucking Rebel Without a Cause. And one about the eve of something. That he, East of Eden. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. Well, so, Jan, it, well, uh, James Dean was only in, what, like three three films? Yeah. There's a yeah. giant, those two, and Rebel, uh, Concrete Jungle, right? Yeah. So, here's... Was he in Concrete Jungle? First, he was pissed because he Thinking only wanted Black to be Board taken Jungle? as a serious actor, not... A teen idol, so that was, he got pissed first with Paramount because of that. Then when he got which, his big break, when when and he had, like some of the movies he did early on there where he's not creepy, they were huge fucking movies. Yeah, but Psycho was the biggest, and so he got really upset for the second time because he's bitchy. Um, because Great. he started getting typecast as a villain, so he started all all like getting villain roles all the time. One of them specifically was like had undertones of uh, like homophobic undertones and stuff like that. So, um, you, uh, was he so gay? he didn't. So what was Anthony Perkins yes. gay? I'm getting oh, to that. Oops. Okay, so he because of that but, was well, no, 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 he was like uh, Roddy McDowell. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, yeah. I actually British? can. I'll be, I'll be able to explain it. No, no, but you. Know, that, that, I'll, I'll, I was about to get to it. I'm okay. going to explain it. Let so, me get to it, okay. So, sorry. Oh, sorry, Heather. I forgot what I was saying. Um, whatever. He was in big roles, but Psycho, big role. Psy, Psycho typecast. He was afraid of being typecast as a villain because he's putting something else where he was a villain again. So he moved to Europe and did a shit ton of movies for like eight years and worked with some like really big heavy hitters. And then he moved back. He was still getting typecast though as a villain. So he just finally, I guess was just like, what the fuck ever? I don't care. So he got married though. He has kids. Mm -hmm. Um, he, he was married to, um, what's her name? Uh, Barry Berenson. For until his death from 1970 something until he died, so he was married to her. She's cute forever. She was very pretty. She's he was she was he she was like 25, he was 40 something when they got married, anyway. So, That's now sick. going to the gay thing. So, <laughs> sorry, but um, Whoa. well, sorry, it must be addressed, I <laughs> guess. For okay, so. Okay, when he got married to this woman, Barry. his friends were like super shocked. Um, for one, Venetia Stevenson admitted to Charles Weinkoff, it was a big shock when I heard Tony got married. I went, not Tony, he's very gay, totally gay. And then, like, I was reading more about it. There's speculation that he was gay. Yeah, like, kids I mean, a guy named Tony? No. Barry. 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 And it's a oh, woman. Okay. He was married to a woman that she, that's like Oz that's in this movie. His Sweet. his son had plays little Norman Bates in this movie. No, but like, so she Young was, she Normie. was like, he did fuck her and Young like Norm, they huh? had kids. But Young it was, Normie. I think she knew and everyone else knew that he had side boyfriends and shit like that because he was actually gay. That's gonna be the same. Um, and I think he wanted to have a family and I think he wanted to like live in what they, and there's what only people one would be like, like a non ostracized. He, don't be so aus- he, he yeah, didn't want to be ostracized. So I think, I just thought that was interesting because I had never. I never heard of him from anything but Psycho, but apparently you are but but Psycho, Psycho Volume Three. <laughs> but Psycho. But Psycho. Dude, but, that's our movie. But Psycho. Welcome to Emilyville, home of the But Psycho. We'd have to get Katie back. So. Um, <laughs> 
are you? Gotta yes. You got to mention this episode. Oh, yeah, yeah we'll, that's we'll, good. we'll get her back. We'll, we'll, Katie we'll, butt we'll, we'll have her come in for psycho. some shoots of, of butt psycho. Um, Watch out, boys. You're the, like leading, you're the leading lady. Zip your pants. You're, you're, Katie's the leading lady. She's going to fucking peg a bunch of people. Um, so. Anyway, my point was <laughs> my point was pre psycho. He was Sorry, like a, a leading guy, I'm not so and, um, and not girl. a fucking villain. This is for Katie. Was, this is not about Katie. But he was real bitchy about like literally everything. So okay, um, but he did say this. Goodbye, I was Dove not. The I'm not really suited to be a movie star. I have no confidence in myself. I'm not interested Aww. in money. I'm not it's good like looking. Normal. I have a hunch on my spine. I can't see worth a damn. I have a very small head. <laughs> Dear kid. I, uh, I, I, haven't, I haven't many opinions. I dislike nightclubs. The kind of shaft. things that give you easy publicity. I have no string of French girls. I'm not tough. I can't put on a show in the in public. Jesus. I'm too much. I'm too I sensitive for Hollywood. These, I yeah. bet every one of those is a shade at a particular moment. Well, he says, I'm too, I'm much too sensitive for Hollywood. Would, uh, I'm an easy target. He just he called tossed himself out him. a dozen daggers. But the they people. they talked about how you know he was supposed to be gawky and stuff. But he, but he Ken. did he did have leading roles where he was like the hunk of the movie. Whatever. Like in that. I mean, you know, Kafka uh, trial I movie. didn't know that about him. That's and it's I like thought, and I thought, I didn't know he was. He got married like to that. a woman. I thought everyone knew he was gay, and that he never married anyone. That was in what the impression I was under. I didn't know he was married for some, like fucking twenty years and had like four kids. If Living a lie. But if I was anyway, in love with a gay person. Oh no, I know. I, she was a beard, but whatever. Wasn't okay. Gay. No, I mean, I would let them it probably, do okay, the yeah. they still wanted to have a family, so, have a life. I, that's why I was. I, yeah, I, yeah, I know. That's what I said earlier. Yeah, in today's economy, the budget get, was five million. million. On, on Mike's new podcast, if, if Mike was gay, Couple <laughs> in America. the budget of this movie was five million dollars. Emily, oh, yeah. that's, that's the reason oh, me and you like it when Emily's between me and you. What? You guys interrupt me so much and I the, do it once. And you get mad. So the budget was five but million. But we're good at doing it. We are. The budget was five million dollars. The gross of the movie it made thirty four, almost thirty five million dollars. God damn. Yeah. So it was huge. Which Wait, that also, that also shocked me. What? How much did you say it cost? Five million. Five, damn. Seven. So times? I mean, like. Friday the uh, Friday the Thirteenth were easy fucking twenty million dollar movies, but their budget was probably not five million fucking dollars. So, um, Lila, obviously she's the same actress from the original. Okay, that Meg Tilly, she was in the Big Chill, Agnes of God, and Amadeus, and she is the younger sister of Jennifer Tilly. Oh, she's the younger one. Mm hmm. Oh. Toomey was also in um D- uh, Die Hard Two and Dress to Kill. I don't know if you said that, but um. The reflection of young Norman Bates, uh, when he fly, that's his son, Oz Perkins. Um, the original house set was used and the motel was reconstructed. So, cause they kept, they kept the house for, uh, studio tours. I know they did that, but they had torn down the hotel part of it. So they had to rebuild that. You think that. the house is still there? It is still there. Hell yeah. I think, unless, Let's last go. time I checked, I think it was, um, Producer Hilton A. Green originally suggested Jamie Lee Curtis to play Mary Loomis due yeah, to her being the do- daughter. Yeah, this is a better movie than Jennifer. Or, oh, yeah. You don't know. Oh, she, yeah. I mean, she shows a lot of sympathy in the movie Prom Night, so whatever. Anyway. I just like. I know you just like her. I get you, it. Okay. You don't even like. Uh, I almost called her Jennifer Jason. I li- no, I like her. In Jamie Pro- Lee Curtis. You haven't listened to the Prom Night episode then, because I give her credit in that one as being a sympathetic and liking one for movie the first is the t- same as liking an actor. For the first. No, it isn't. No, it's not. You don't seem to like no, it's not. Jamie Lee no, Curtis. it's not. And I like her in other stuff. I don't. I don't dislike Jamie Lee Curtis. I don't like Laurie Strode in the first two movies. Okay, that's my issue. She's a weak final girl. She was not a good final girl until Prom Night. That was the first movie where she's a strong final girl. Hey, Emily, Emily. Okay. What do you think about the first Halloween? I'm sorry, Emily. I'm sorry, Heather. Jamie Lee Curtis has so had a cute. scheduling contact conflict be and she didn't want to return to the horror genre after getting such a huge role in uh, trading places um at time code 25 minutes and 10 seconds when mary and norman first go into norman's norman's mother's room before they turn the lights on you can see alfred hitchcock's silhouette cool. on the wall to the far right there are like two more times that happens but um i told you about the meg tilly thing um she didn't get along well with either director or anthony perkins um, she complained about all the psycho fans at one point. Um, 
Perkins, who already wasn't happy with her performance, it wasn't Anthony. It was difficult. Asked Frankie to fire. For, uh, sorry, Franklin to fire her. Like Tilly said it was the worst work experience of her career, um, and she did not attend the premiere. In spite of this, she got praise performances, and yeah, so she's good in it. On the other hand, Vera, Vera Miles said in interviews that she never really talked to Anthony Perkins <coughs> during the shooting of the original movie. And she said that Hitchcock was so strict and focused and everyone was bending over backwards to get his stuff right. So no one really had time to socialize or like get to know each other. But she said when they were shooting the sequel, both she and Anthony Perkins had loosened up and they had a, a lot of conversation. She said he was delightful. So he really just got bitchy with uh, Tilly because she didn't know Psycho. Well, I'd like to hear what... It was, pe- he said it was a four, petty fucking but bitch. But he made two more of these. Who knows what he acted like on them? Well, okay. Anthony Perkins, Vera Miles, and Virginia Gregg, Norman Bates, are the only actors to reprise their roles from Psycho. Um, the character of Sam Loomis from the original film is written out. So he's in the first one. He's the dad. Yeah, he's or he's oh, the Mary. wife. Of the hus- Is his name Mary, uh, Lila's husband? Yes. Yeah. So his uh, it was written out as the actor was currently serving as the ambassador of <laughs> American ambassador to Mexico. Oh shit! Yeah, so he had to be written Sam out from Psycho. <laughs> um, Quentin Tarantino has stated that this is one of his favorite films, and he prefers it to Psych to the original Psycho. Okay. Um, the scene in Norman's childhood bedroom where Mary confronts him on the bed was added by screenwriter Tom Holland at the request of Anthony Perkins, who felt that his character needed a move, moving moment with the character of Mary, even though he hated work with, or they hated working with each other. Anyway, um, in 1960, uh, in 1960, Psycho made over three thirty two million, and this made thirty four. But I. I it's don't know if they're taking. Different. I don't. Th- I don't know if they're taking inflation into account when, with that with that number. I yeah. don't know if it made thirty two million at the time. If it or, made thirty two million, or, 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 or if it, or if w- or if when this or like a, to today's inflation, yeah. or or adjusted for how many theaters are around. Uh, right. Yeah. You know, but I I do think how, how many like uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that screens. that it was thirty two million in six back then, and so now it'd be like double that at least. Yeah. Easy. So, um, Brian De Palma declined to direct this movie. Um, Richard Franklin, the director, was selected to direct the movie because of a film he made called Road Games, which I, I think that has Jamie Lee Curtis in it. That was considered that to be That's influenced good. by Rear Window, which is one of Hitchcock's like best just, films. I mean, it's, I think it's his best right? film, but I mean, that's just um, yeah. Richard Frank, yeah. The, 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 he also did Patrick. <laughs> dial in for murder. So whenever. That one's my favorite. I think I Rue, Rue Window is my favorite. Didn't Patrick, he did Patrick, and didn't Goblin do the Patrick soundtrack? Who? Richard. I uh, don't know. I don't know. But, um. So okay. in the it's same way. Dude, dude where, where's my car is my favorite Hitchcock. Mine's <laughs> <laughs> not another teen movie. Yeah. Oh, right. that's, that's, that's such a good, that's a good one. My sick whole five. Oh my god! I just deleted. It. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Um, I, so I thought, Wing I, it, girl. So there's a scene where Anthony Perkins the back of that is box playing the piano. Deleted. You know when he's playing the piano? Yeah. I mean, that's right. actually him because he's really good at piano. He's apparently. Um, the film was shot in 32 days. Um, it's not based off the novel of the same name by Robert Block. Um, the final theatrical feature of this is this was the final theatrical feature film of actress Claudia Breyer who played Emma Spool. Um, yeah. both Mary and Norman call their mothers mother, not mom. And in fact, both have crazy mothers that are manipulative antagonists <laughs> again, who led to their own demise. Didn't old people just call use mother? I don't know. Mother. Um, I already talked about the body double. Meg Tilly wouldn't be nude. Um, the final, se- gotta do it. Yeah, the final scene of Norman hitting Mrs. Spool with the shovel was not given to cast and crew until the last day of shooting. All the shooting scripts ended with a message saying, the final scene will be distributed to cast and crew on the last day of shooting. Uh, the only people that knew about the ending were the director, Richard Franklin, and writer Tom Holland. So, so no we're going to talk so, about Tom yeah. Holland a little bit? No. He and wrote the shooting script, an extended yeah, scene in the sheriff's play. office at the end of the movie reveals the Mary survives the gunshot and she'll pull it through, but goes mad. There's an, like the, In the shooting script, that was a, an extension. 
Um, so, and then I already talked about there are actually four killers in this movie. So, that's more than any other slasher film in history. For sure. So, you have, you <laughs> so, have wait. Norman killing Norman. his mom and Marion. Yeah. Emma killing people. Mary stabbing the guy. And the castle of Mary away. And the sheriff. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. <laughs> That was a lot. So say gag. Well, well, you know, Tom Holland, who oh. also wrote this and that class of 1984, he went on to direct. Oh, we're going to do that during Action Slasher. He went on to direct Child's Play, Friday Night, The Temp, Langoliers, and Thinner. What do you rate it? I rate it four. Mike? Three. I gave it a three. Five. I gave it. A, I gave it a three. I, yeah, three five. Three, I gave it a three and a half. Three point five. Three. Yeah. Uh, no, I think I'm gonna go three point seven five. It was really so good. If you do it, I will too. I think um, that I think my, it, my four is nostalgia, but also I think the movie's. Really I had good. no nostalgia well, with it. I only well saw acted. it for the first time like there's six no, months ago. There's no thank you. There's nothing where you're like that shit doesn't make sense. Why? Which I. Don't yeah, need yeah. to do, but this I ended up doing most movies. This one is really yeah. well crafted. Yeah, it's great. Well and thought out. It does take forty it minutes to get sequel. to a death. The, but... the way it's shot with the color you know, popping and everything, like, like the way it's shot yeah. and like it's like it, it's, it's creepy in the right ways. Are three and four still in the eighties? I think so. I'm more excited. I think to watch one of them is in the three. The radio one is fucking awesome, but it's a it's not as it's nowhere near as good as he's not asking that. He's asking if it's um. Said if they were, if they were filmed in the eighties, and I think they, they are, all yeah. I think they yeah. all were. Maybe the fourth I one see was the not. Other two now. I didn't really particularly go into this wanting to watch it. I was just like, okay, Psycho two. But Psycho now three is eighty six. I really want to see three and four. Is there a fifth one? Uh, I know Mick Garris did four. There's a fourth one under that. Oh, it did. It did come out in nineteen ninety, well, and a, it was a, a TV show, and it was a TV movie. Well, there's a TV show based on itself. Which Psycho Ford: The Beginning is a TV consoles. movie that came out in 1990 with Anthony Perkins. So it was the four. It was Psycho Four, um, and yeah. So, but it was in 1990. So stay gagged on uh, your mom. Stay gagged on toasted cheese sandwiches. Stay gagged on those Anthony Perks. Stay gagged on Meg Tilly and the Perks of uh, being all wallflower. Brought to you by Quaker Oats and Lipton's Tea. And thanks. For, thanks. I was like, thank you for to no one. Um, Heather? Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> I was like, why am I Heather, saying this? Thank, thank you, so you Heather, for, for giving us this. I actually really I like, I like this movie a lot. Um, the movie's great. So uh, stay gagged on all of our social media Instagram, TikTok, um, Gag, Knife, Gag Me With a Knife podcast, Twitter, Gag Knife Pod, become a Patreon for member shout outs, early access to episodes. Bonus six episode, bonus exclusive episodes, and fan requested episodes like this one. Somebody um, call Mike. Buy our merch at w, uh, sorry, uh, Patreon is www.patreon.com slash gag with an podcast. Buy our merch at gag with an podcast.com. We'll see you next time. Bye. Heather, don't. Yeah. As a shorty playing in the front yard of the crib, I fell down and I bumped my head. Somebody helped me up and asked me if I bumped my head. I said, yeah. So then they said, oh, so that means you're going you gonna to switch it on them. I said, yeah, flip mode. Flip mode is the greatest. You know, and as a shorty, I was always told that if I ain't going to be part of the greatest, I got to be the greatest myself. Come on, come on, yeah, come on. Yeah, nigga, what? What a surprise. Give you something, make a nigga close over your eyes. All my niggas getting money, capitalized. Die, little small guy, we on the rise. Everything a nigga touch, platinumized. Full of your crib, you know we come with all our supplies. Got a big gun and I'ma show you the size. You fuck with any of my flip mode family ties. Me and my niggas be coming through, stroking you out. Killing off any and everything you talking about. See you in the club, now we walking you out. Should've thought twice before you went and open your mouth. Yo, anyway, we stay keeping it moving. Fucking with the wrong nigga, hope you know what you're doing. Now blame me, all the same niggas is lame. It's not a game, make a name still split in your brain. Y'all niggas had enough? Give me some more. Y'all niggas want the wild shit? Give me some more. Yo, split, where the weed at? Give me some more. I know y'all niggas need that. Give me some more. Even we get money, you can give me some more. With the cars in the big crib, give me some more. Everybody spread love, give me some more. If you want it, let me hear you say it, give me some more. Flash with a rash, give me my cash, look at my ass. Running with my money, son, go out with a blast. Do what you want, the niggas cut in the corner, you fucking up the order. Go ahead and meet the reporter. Yo, she telling news on how you switch to a bitch. Little fake funny down and get chill with a snitch. So now I pass you straight, I don't got nothing to ask you. Make a little room for me, you know my niggas to pass through. Cartier, Sydney Portier, hooray shit. Roll with all of my niggas from around the way shit. When I come through, your niggas know I do my thing, bring more shit to generate money. Cha ching, arrest you, lyrically, flow will caress you. Bless you, then a nigga come to your rescue. Why you assume a nigga blossom and bloom? I'm coming soon, hit you with a boom, give me some room. Y'all niggas had enough? Give me some more. Y'all niggas want the wild 
more. Shit. Give me some more. Hey, Spliff, where the weed at? Give me some more. I know y'all niggas need that. Give me some more. Even though we getting money, you can give me some more. Cars in the big crib. Give me some more. Everybody's red love. Give me some more. If you want to let me hear you say it. Give, give me some, some more. more. Yo, yo. Live nigga shit. Know what I mean? And represent why we getting money and reign supreme. Hope y'all niggas don't be coming through full steam. Can't see me better turn on your high beam. Hold my niggas while I'm ringing the siren. Flip oh. on. We go with niggas from my team. Never should you ever try to fuck with my cream. My OD. When my shit get all in your bloodstream. Every time we be ripping and be blowing the damn blow when you all fucking with the hottest niggas around. Rock us with me and my people run through your town. Holding it down. Thinking the wild nigga give me my crown. Hey, yo. All my people need to come and surround. A nigga be hitting so much to make you fall on the ground. Sure to make you shot. That's what I be all about. Turning you out. Making all of you niggas fall out. Y'all niggas had enough? Give me some more. Y'all niggas want the wild shit? Give me some more. Hey, Spliff, where the weed at? Give me some more. I know y'all niggas need that. Give me some more. Even though we getting money, you can give me some more. With the cars in the big crib. Give me some more. Everybody spread love. Give me some more. If you want to let me hear you say it. Give me some more.